OK, now we're actually going to move into the head itself some, so we might want to. OK, once again, I told you that we're, run we're running with LEDs and receivers across the whole bill path. So we can read virtually the whole bill, which helps us with the security on it. And uh, you can also, you'll, you'll catch all of your, all of your uh, seal strips you know, for security. Um, and it's much better than a, a mag reader. I, it's, it, it'll read through. I have yet to find anything go through there that is not a good valid bill. I haven't heard any feedback come back either on that. Yeah. With, with, the, with the light bar, we, there's all, actually we have a mylar that goes across the light bar so that if one of your LEDs actually starts to lose its intensity, this, this light bar is put across so that it'll actually even out the light flow that's going across there so you will get an even good read all the time. And the fact that we're running multiple, we're running eight LEDs instead of four, it also helps with the lifespan of it. Those LEDs are all different wavelengths, aren't Yes, they, they are. We're, run, we're running at six different wavelengths on this. So we're catching everything. Uh, and by the way, if you guys do have any questions throughout, just ask it right now. What is the lifespan? I can't tell you what the lifespan is on it right now because it just came out. You're not even going to your Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, this is getting good. Yeah, let me grab my tail and get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to move, up, move on a little bit now. No, we don't want to change because we want to stay right here. What, what I want to talk about now is the barcode. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Uh huh. That's. That's a very good question. That depends, that depends on gaming in Mississippi when they go through and approve it. The question was, when will they approve you approved in Mississippi? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the, que the question out. When the Saints win the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it, all de it all depends on uh, the local gaming jurisdiction in your area as to, as to when it'll be approved. Everybody, every, ju every gaming jurisdiction is different, and they're a little bit more stringent in some ways than in others, and they scrutinize a lot more, and they want to, a lot of places just want to wait and see how it's working in other areas before they'll go ahead and approve it. I'm hoping that it's approved everywhere real quick because it's a really good system. Any other questions? We shall move on. What I want to talk about next is the barcode readers. And we have actually two lenses for the barcodes. And this is for your ticket in, ticket out, which falls right into my printer training that I'll be giving in the next session. But so that we can actually read the barcode, validate it, and give the customer credit, they have put in a barcode window and a reader. Now, the nice thing that they did with this is there's actually two lenses that you can see. There's one that's right here, and then there's one on the bottom here. The reason they put two windows in is because in some cases, you can't, you can't use a down stacking unit. You have to use an up stacking unit, and the way to do that is just flip your whole unit upside down. Now, you can actually, and the only problem is you have to still put your ticket in facing up. So they moved, they put another window in just in case you need to go ahead and swap it over. Go ahead. If you have two windows, how come you, we don't have it so the doctor's going upside down to begin with, so we can't see them in the window when there's a dispute? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. You have two windows to read the barcode. Yeah. Simply for the fact that the way the dispute resolution window is set up, you wouldn't see the barcode or the validation on it anyway. And MEI is only using one reader per unit. They're not, they're not putting them in both, but, but they give you the option if you need to change to an upstacker, you can go ahead and flip it and put that bar, barcode reader in on there, and then you'll be able to read the barcodes. But as far as a regular ticket, 
with the dispute resolution window, it's not so good for the tickets. It's more set up for the bills. Does that answer your question? Yeah. You just yes I answered one. <laughs> There we go. Now, this is also a reflective receiver. So it's going to go out and it's going to look for, it's going to look for the reflection, bring it back in. That's how we get validation on it. Now, we talked a little bit earlier about our 100 uh, thing level. And it also speeds up the process as far as bringing the bill in, validating it, stacking it, and giving the customer their credits. Uh, they say in here, it, it's related to a computer processor, just smaller, obviously a, one of the little older processors because it's only 100, but it does speed up the process tremendously. We're talking approximately three seconds between the customer putting the bill in, it being validated, stacked, and the customer getting their credits. Now, we have early bill pickup. This is actually located on the front of the head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off our... Uh... And here's another nice little extra. Your bezel. No screws. Snaps on. Easy on, easy off. Just pop it right off. Now, located on the front of the bill validator... Yeah, I'd catch a good spot. We have what are called D-rings that are located right up in the front. And what they'll do is when they sense that a bill is going in, these D-rings are actually going to jump out. Sure. How's that? And the D-rings are located right there. Now, when I go to put a bill in, what it's going to do is it's going to jump out and it's going to grab that bill. You can actually see that in action there. Doesn't that also self-center it as well? Yes, it does. So you could actually put a bill in on an angle, and it'll go through and straighten it out for you. Let me go in this way. And it'll go through, and it'll straighten it out. The nice thing about this is you'll notice that with the ZTs and uh, more than likely your WBAs, you, act, you actually have to put the bill in quite a ways before it'll actually come and catch it because you're, you're working off of belts. No belts used in this unit. It's all gears. So we can go through and we can pick up that bill really, really quick. Any questions at this point? We have a smooth, sealed bill path on the bill validator itself. Yeah, for a little bit. And we can actually... Yeah. Now, this is all sealed right in here on the bill path. Works great with bar top applications. And you guys know, you, you, you put a, a bill validator in a bar top, you're going to get spillage in it. There's just no way around it. The nice thing about this cash flow setup is it's completely sealed. There's no way for any fluid to get onto any electrical components. No boards will get fried that way. It actually, will, it actually will divert the fluid off to the side and drain it on out. And it also protects against dust. And we know, you, you open up some games and you got a quarter inch of dust sitting in there. Uh, now, I spoke a few, a few minutes ago about no belts. There are no belts to re replace on the validator head itself or on the cash can. It's all gear driven. And it also replaces as a complete module. You don't have to break it down. You don't have to break a head off of a transport to get it. Because we're a front stacking unit, we don't have a transport. We don't have a big long unit on the back. We don't have to worry about that.